What is going on everyone? So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the Arca Swiss C1 geared head. So for the past eight years, this right here is a tripod head that I've used has a really nice platform here on the top so I can mount the 8x10 view camera to it. It has dual threads there. Uh, pan tilt head so you have three different knobs there to control each access. Um, but ultimately when it's fully assembled, it's kind of a large bulky setup. And if this is attached to a tripod inside my pack, this right here can and will catch branches. So, you know, that happens. Um, so I would really have to disassemble this and either leave it on the tripod or kind of wrap it up and throw it in my bag. So every time I'd go to use it, I'd basically have to put the head on top of the tripod, attach the handles, then kind of awkwardly attach the camera to the top platform there. And it worked, it's very solid, but that really slowed things down even more. And it also kind of made me uh, kind of develop a strategy as far as leaving the camera overnight because I didn't have a quick release. So if I wanted to shoot a photo in the morning and I wanted to have the time to sort of uh, get the composition and focus everything set, the only solution I could really think of was to get everything set the day before and lock everything down, weight the camera down, and then come back to it in the morning. That worked for a very long time until January of this year when uh, my ebony camera was blown over and uh, so it had some pretty bad damage to it. It's, it's up and running again now, which is good. Um, but it would be nice to have something with a quick release that was a solid head and compact. And that is where the Arca Swiss Cube C1 comes into play. This is a head that was recommended to me by two photographers who I have a lot of respect for. Uh, Shane Dignam first mentioned this head many, many years ago uh, when we were on a trip in Zion and uh, let me check it out. And I was very, very impressed, but also I gotta say the price tag is pretty high on this head. And so I was kind of avoiding spending that much money on a tripod head when the Gitzo, which is less than a $400 head, would do quite well. Uh, and then even more recently, another photographer, uh, Michael Strickland, really recommended this head as well. And based on everything that happened earlier this year, I decided, you know, it probably is time to upgrade the head. And this is, a very expensive head, um, but at the same time, it does basically what I need it to do. It's something that is a lot more compact than the one that I was using. It actually weighs less than this head right here, which is, I think, pretty impressive given the fact it's a solid chunk of metal for the most part. You don't have any knobs hanging off of it that are really gonna get in the way. And I can just basically take this and put it in a cloth wrap, I like the ones from Tenba and then put that in my bag. I don't really like to hike with this on the side of my pack on top of the tripod because I don't want this banging into things or something that is that precise and uh, don't want sand getting in there. So I want to keep it nice and clean. And one of the really nice things about using it on this Gitzo tripod is that they have a kind of a quick release method for um, taking the tripod head off. So if I undo that guy right there, then there's a button I press and I can remove the head just like that. So I keep the Gitzo uh, flat plate attached to the head itself, and I can take this, put this on a wrap, and put it in my bag. When it comes time to set up, all I have to do is drop that in place, and then tighten this down just like that. So it's kind of like having a quick release um, for the tripod head, you know, between the uh, tripod and the head itself. So I had a couple concerns when it comes to a head like this, because I hadn't worked with a geared head before. And one of the concerns was the fact that there's no real way to fully lock this down. It's always gonna be in its geared state. And I was worried a little bit about what would happen if you have a pretty big bulky camera up there and you got a lot of stress kind of moving it one way or the other. And also I'll say that I didn't see a lot of really good video content about this head and I didn't really see a lot of video of it in action. So I figured I'd do this video to kind of show you guys the ins and the outs of this head. I bought this head back in, I think it was February. And uh, I got the version that has the standard quick release, which is the turn knob right here, which I very much prefer to the uh, adjustable sort of lever arm. I always prefer these because you snug things down really nice and tight. Um, and also it's a nice simple mechanism, which I definitely like. Simple is really good in that regard. 
Um, but I'm going to show you guys kind of how everything works here and kind of how it responds when you put some weight on it. Because after I show you the head and what all the knobs do, then we're going to throw a camera on it. I'll show you kind of what happens as far as when there's actually some weight on it. So when I first got the head, you look at it, and it looks like this board cube, you know, and you're trying to figure out, all right, where's the front of it, where's the back of it? Easiest way to remember it is you got these two levels right here. This is the back of it, and then this over here is gonna be the front of it. So this is the surface that you're gonna be looking at when you're working with the tripod head. Uh, if we start down below here, there is a knob right down here, which is gonna be the overall panning base. I should say the lower panning base because it also is a panning base up top. Um, all you have to do is just turn this knob here and lock it down. It's probably important to be careful not to tighten that too much because it doesn't really take a lot in order to tighten it down. Um, then we have a series of knobs. There's two knobs on this side, one knob on this side, and then the back and the front both have a knob there. You also have some friction control knobs, and then this right here is the adjustment for the uh, main penning base up top. So if I lock this down here, I'll show you kind of what some of this stuff does. So first we'll start with this guy right here. So if I were to loosen this knob, now the whole thing is gonna hinge open like that. So I'll let you guys see that mechanism as it moves. So what happens is that when you turn this down, these two pieces right here tighten up against these old dovetails here, and it's gonna lock this head in place. Um, so very, very solid, kind of hinges outward there like that. And you do have some indicators here showing you zero degrees, 30 degrees, 45, and 60 degrees. And uh, also worth mentioning, it does actually extend a little bit past 60 degrees, just like that. Um, so this gets to be useful when shooting stuff like I like to shoot the intimate landscape photos where I'm angling the camera downward. So this gives sort of the crude adjustment and then you can fine tune it with the geared adjustments in addition to that. Um, and so I'm going to actually go ahead and lower this guy back down in place, just like that. Now I'm going to show you, so spin this back around here, um, the geared adjustments. So we have this knob here, and on the opposite side, you have the knob right over here. Uh, these are the ones that you're going to use to adjust this motion right here. And I'll actually I'll spin it around this way because there's a friction control knob also I want you guys to see here. But if I have the friction dialed to the negative side right now, as I turn this knob, actually both knobs at the same time, you see that the tripod head there starts to move. And it takes a little bit of work to turn it when you don't have anything on there, but when you actually have the weight of a camera on there, it'll actually work a lot more smoothly. And there is no need when you don't have anything on there to dial the friction up, um, but you'll find that as soon as you put a load on there, that is where that comes in handy. Now that was one of the questions I had on this head uh, with regard to the fact that there's no way of actually fully locking it down. And so I wondered how is that gonna be if you have a big camera on there and the camera's kind of pulling on one side or the other and can it actually move the head when you don't want it to? And the answer is yes. So if you have this dialed all the way to the negative side for the friction and you have a camera on there and you try to pull down on that, uh, it will be able to move it. But if you were to lock down the friction control knob to the positive side, then it's gonna have enough friction where it will not be able to overcome that. And I find that on my camera when I put it on there, I do need to dial the friction there. And then it's as good as locked down as soon as you have it set to where you want it to be. And so if I spin this back around here, now you'll see that I have the knob right on the back and there's also a facing knob on the front. So this is how you're gonna kind of level it from side to side, just like that, and then just like that. So we can use those controls in combination, combination with each other. So if I do want to be able to shoot something including something straight down, if I loosen this knob here to pivot it forward, Lock that in place there. And then I can actually take this guy right here and angle it all the way like that. So you can see I'm actually even uh, beyond 90 degrees straight down. So pretty clever design. It's a very solid design. And as I said earlier, as soon as you have uh, these friction knobs dialed to the positive side, even with a very large setup on there, it's not gonna move on its own. 
and I have already tested that with the, uh, the large camera. Um, using this head is really, I mean, it's really fun using this head when you're in the field. If you wanna just fine tune the composition just a little bit, the ability just to dial things in just a little bit at a time. It really helped with a particular photo I shot on my spring trip where I wanted to kind of be very particular about setting up a composition because there's this tree I was trying to avoid. I was able to just to move it just a little bit at a time to get just the right composition. And it really does make the process of finding that composition a lot easier because you can just adjust it a little bit at a time. You don't have to worry about locking things down as soon as you're done. Now let's take a look at the top platform here. So on the very front of it, you're gonna have a, a little knob right here. And this is what's gonna loosen the top panning base. So if you wanted to, you could use this as a panorama head. You basically will use the geared movements to level a top platform. And then now that you're level up here, now you can pan from side to side. And you do have some markings here as far as degrees there, so you can kind of keep track of where you're moving there. Um, so really, really simple. And um, the one thing I will say is that this is definitely a head that is not gonna be on my tripod as I'm hiking around because I don't want this to get banged into rocks. So it's really important, I think, to put a wrap on it to really keep it very well protected. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a camera on there. I'm gonna put a Arca Swiss camera. Uh, that way you can kind of see how this performs with the weight of the camera and how everything balances in that regard. So I went ahead and put my Arca Swiss F-Line 8x10 camera on top of the cube head. And on the camera, I do have a Nikon W 300 millimeter 5.6 lens, which is a really heavy lens. And this is a setup that I commonly use. I really like using the normal lens here. And this will be a pretty good test as far as how the cube head is gonna stack up as soon as you have a pretty heavy load on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you all the various movements of the head with the camera on it. And that way you can kind of see real world how it works and also how important it is to have the friction control set. So let's start with the lower panning base, which is the knob right back here. And so with that loose, you can see it is pretty easy to spin around, not quite as smooth as a fluid video head, um, but honestly not too far from it. So if I lock that down and then I loosen the top panning base, you can see how just the camera up top spins. And again, that is pretty darn smooth. Um, so not quite as smooth as a video head, but it has kind of that nice resistance where in a pinch, honestly, you could probably use it as one. Um, now we look at the other controls. So I'm gonna spin this around so I can see this a little bit better from my angle. So first we're gonna start with the up and down geared motion. And I do have a friction knob that I'm gonna leave all the way on the negative side, which is not how I'd use this, but I just wanna show you the amount of weight it takes in order to move this setup. Um, so with that set, um, at the zeroed out position, I'm not able to pull down on the camera, but as I angle this a little bit more here, I'm at 15 degrees, I can't adjust it. And then if I go to about 20 degrees, I'm getting close to being able to, 25 degrees, then I actually am able to move it. So basically you need to have a, uh, base friction set in order to avoid that. So if I rack this back to the zero setting, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to adjust the friction knob all the way to the positive side, which is how I'd wanna use it with this setup. Now, if I go ahead and lock this in place, and same thing, I am going to uh, adjust this here where I'm angling downward. That's at 10 degrees, that's rock solid. We are at 15 degrees solid, 20 degrees, we got iffy before, still solid, 25, it's not budging, and all the way down to 30, it won't be able to budge there because it does reach the end point. So it is very important as you put a heavy load on this to remember to dial down that friction adjustment. It does mean you have to work a little harder to adjust it as you're moving it, uh, but it does keep it really solid all the way through. Uh, the next adjustment is gonna be the sort of the leveling adjustment, which is the knob on the front and on the back, right there and right there. And you'll see that on the back of the head, there is also a friction adjustment right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and adjust that friction adjustment 
uh, to the negative side there. So there's no friction adjustment. It's super easy to adjust this, and I'd actually say it's probably too easy. That's another one where I like to leave that set all the way to the positive side. So again, it's right there. You basically just adjust that all the way to the positive side. And then once you do that, it does take a little more effort to turn it, but honestly, that feels a lot better because before it was almost moving a little bit too easily. Um, and then the final adjustment, and this is the one that gets to be a little bit more awkward, is when you adjust to basically let it hinge forward. And because there's, it's not geared, so it's just gonna kind of move on its own. So I'm gonna simply just kind of help guide it down there. And then I can lock this down and it is going to be uh, really solid by doing that. You have to be careful of center of gravity so the whole thing doesn't just tip over. Uh, and then likewise, I'm going to loosen that and then bring this guy back down right there. So there you have it. Uh, Arca Swiss Cube is a really solid setup. It's just fine that it doesn't have anything to fully lock it down because those friction control knobs are very important. But this is what makes it a lot easier when you're setting up a very precise composition because you can dial it in one way or the other, especially when you combine that with what this camera is able to do. I'll do a separate video on this camera a little bit later. But thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you around next time. <music>